The very message God gave me, the very passage was the passage you came to read. Read from first Isaiah chapter 1, verse number 14, 15, 16. And that is a chapter God gave me for the nation Ghana. And for the purpose of clarity, I wanted to read the, the entire Isaiah chapter 1. Ghana must hear this message. The president of Ghana must hear this message. The vice president must hear this message. Opposition leader, His Excellency John Mama, must hear this message. Speaker of Parliament must hear this message. From verse number one, if I start from verse number two, Isaiah chapter one, start from number two. And I'm reading from number 2 through to 31. The chief justice must hear this one. Every man, every woman on the land of Oman, Ghana must hear this message. Because Ghana is in trouble. And Ghana is in trouble not because somebody inflicted it upon us. We have inflicted trouble upon ourselves. The attitude of Ghana is appalling and wickedness. Betrayal has become our way of life. Jealousy and unnecessary enviness. And people are reaping from where they have not sown. The reason why Ghana is in this dire situation is because greedy people have found themselves into politics. Both in MPP and NDC, there are certain people in politics today that are only there for their selfish reasons. And as a matter of fact, a lot of people have found themselves into journalism because they want to make money. A lot of people are into law because they want to steal. Unfortunately, judges cannot even be exempted. Even like the Galatians, who started well in the spirit. Every politician in Ghana, before they come, they tell you how much God was going to do it. Until when they get into the hem of affairs, they forget the God. And when you forget God, God will forget you. Ghana seems to be in trouble because God is watching us like this with his hand. That is a balm of Gilead for Ghana. The Ghana that were called magicians, what happened to us? The Ghana that were referred to as magicians. Magicians because we get little pay, but our children are schooled. We get little pay, but we are fed all right. We get little pay, but things get a problem. Ghana, that people talk about magicians, that every sickness that comes into even the west coast of Africa in this community, Ghana gets away with it. Look at how we survive e e Ebola. Look at how Ghana survived even coronavirus. Don't tell me. That the way Ghana survived is because of how good the planners we are. It's the finger of God. But why are we taking the credit? Why are we taking the credit? I think the Lord will have me say to Ghana that we should stop taking the credit and give glory to God. We give glory to the Lord. He reigns. We give glory to the Lord. He reigns. He reigns. He reigns. We give glory to the Lord. In verse number 7, the Bible says, Your country is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. Strangers devour your land in your presence. Hasn't strangers taken over Ghana? In our foolishness, we give credit to foreigners more than our own. The properties of Ghanaians have been collected by so-called leaders of this community and given to strangers. Our banks are handled by strangers. Our dollars are handled by strangers. Our foreign currency are handled by strangers. 
Our farms are handled by strangers. Unfortunately, our gold and our diamond are also handled by strangers. If you go to the site of Galamse, the people who do the menial jobs are Ghanaians, and the people who sit in Thai and collect the money are foreigners. And our police is not seeing that. Our immigration is not seeing that. Our security agents are not seeing that. They waste their energy on useless things. Undermining people's destiny, people's testimony, and people's dignity, and people's hard re- reputation is what we use our security agencies to do. Pettiness. And that's a wickedness. And listen to me. These are some of the reasons why Ghana is in pain. Tell me how many people can say here that we don't know where the perpetrators of our water bodies are. Ghana must wake up. We are sleeping. We've slept. And the tears that have been sold are too deep. We are getting wounded. Our children, our children, children will be asking this question. Prosperity will judge Ghana if we don't stand firm. Because what we are doing to our nation Don't you think that with the money some people are amassing, it is incubators that will be handling it for them. There are a lot of people with money today, but they cannot sleep. The people have stolen our money. Trust me, they make noise outside. They look from where answer, but deep inside them, a metene hila, almost yari. They are carrying sickness. There are a lot of people you see fine like that. If you know what is happening to the antenna organs, you will be shocked. They've stolen our money, and you don't have any money in your pocket. But everything you do is all right. Everywhere you go is all right. I came to tell you today that if only we can turn to God uh, with our heart, uh, with our strength, uh, with our substance. God will make a way for us where there seems to be no way. Ghana must wake up. Strangers! And it is desolate as overthrown by strangers. Strangers are determined what our currency should be. Our city is determined by strangers. And as a matter of fact, today, if you go to the banks, if you go to certain places, the people who carry it are people who under normal circumstances should be serving us. No doubt the Bible says that there's an error. That slaves are riding on horses and prince and princess are walking as slaves. In Isaiah chapter 1 verse 8, 9 and 10 the Bible says so the daughters of Zion is left as a boot in the vineyard. True. Some of you listening to me today they are too beautiful to be single. I rebuke that spirit that makes you single. I rebuke that spirit that makes you. Some of you today, some useless man will have to sleep with you before they give you pittance. You look at the dignity of our women and they are gone because the church has lost its place. I speak to the church first before I speak to the politicians. And I think the church, Bishop, the church has a responsibility. We have. We have a responsibility because the church in our ability for our leaders to, to be able to win the heart of leadership in presidential leadership and opposition leadership, we have distorted the message. Forgetting that the heart of the king is in the hands of the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe the Lord will have me say to Ghana that stop sleeping. And some of you, from the day you wipe your face, They'll be hungry, but you'll not be hungry. They'll be sick, but you'll not be sick. They'll be wanted, but you'll not be wanted. They'll be stopped, but you'll not be stopped. They will be slowed down, but you'll not be slowed down. They will take their children to the best school abroad. Your school, your children will school here, but they will do better than they who went abroad. They will come back to meet you here because it is God who builds us and not man. So the daughters of Zion is left as a boot. In the vineyard, as a hut in the garden of Concubus, as a besieged city. Verse 9 Unless the Lord of hosts had left to us a very small remnant, we would have become like Sodom. We would have been made like Gomorrah. Yes, I can tell you this. 
without divulging any national security that in parliament now there are some MPs who are supposed to be part of the anti-gay who have not been part of it again. Being politically correct is what has brought the doom to Ghana today. And I speak as a pastor. Are you not afraid? Afraid of what? At this age of mine. How many times did I die? Tell me how many times I'll die. And of course, there are people who, when they die, they don't know where they are going. Lawrence, I know exactly when I'm going when I die. In fact, the people who kill me rather than very sad for. Ghana is becoming Sodom and Gomorrah. And the things that some time ago we stoned people about, we rebuke people about, we chastise people about, we try to massage it politically now. Shame on our politicians. Unfortunately, shame on our pastors too. Who knows the truth but cannot speak the truth because of pretense. Because of pretense. Because of pretense. We know the truth but we cannot speak the truth. Shame on our pastors. Shame on the clergy. Shame on my colleagues. Shame on my brothers. Shame on all of us. We have missed it. We've missed it, ladies and gentlemen. And we have caused some of you to be desolate in pain because of pretense. In Isaiah chapter 10, verse 9, hear the word of the Lord. Go back. Hear. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 10. Hear the word of the Lord. Your rulers of Sodom, give ear to the, you rulers of Sodom, Sodom, give ear to the law of our God, you people of Gomorrah. Ladies and gentlemen, how many of you know that we have Sodom and Gomorrah now? How many of you have seen certain things in Ghana that is not Ghanaian? How many of you have seen certain things in Ghana that you never thought in a million years could happen in Ghana? How many of you have seen certain things, have witnessed certain things in Ghana? How many of you have heard certain people speak in Ghana and you are shocked because you expect them that what their mothers use their money for to school them in the Christian schools, you never knew that they would speak that rubbish. In verse 11, Isaiah chapter 11, verse 11. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifice to me? That's what God is saying. Says the Lord. I've had enough of burnt offering of rams and the fat of fat cattle. I do not delight in the blood of bulls or of lambs or goats. Shame on all of us. When you go to the church and you go and give the pastor 10,000 cities, 20,000 cities, then they clap for you. Politician brought this, MP brought this, vice president brought this, president brought this, MP brought this, and DC brought this, and then the rich man brought this, and then you are living in fool's paradise when you're beaten. Even your offering is stinking. Ladies and gentlemen, let's wake up from our sleep. We are all sleeping. And where we draw our attention to is useless. Ghana is doomed because of this nonsense. I do not take delight in the blood of bulls or of lambs of goats. Trust me, most of you, the politicians, the gift you are giving to certain church leaders is useless. And I want to say this to NDC, MPP, CPP, or politicians. Ghanaians are very descending now. This coming election, next one, it will be very interesting though. Because Ghanaians are descending. You give me t-shirts, I'll still vote against you. You give me food, I'll still vote against you. You give me car, I'll still vote against you. In fact, there are people who are waiting. It doesn't matter what you give them. They will all be descending. In fact, some people will even go to the booth and God will decide where the direction it will be. And some people will get confused when they get into the ballot box. Because God will direct the affairs. Ladies and gentlemen, things will happen. It will happen. In Isaiah chapter 1, verse 12, 13 and 14, the Bible says, When you come to appear before me, who has acquired, who required this from your hand, to temper my courts. How dare you decide what should happen in the church? I've been very angry this week. In my spirit. How dare in your foolishness think you can decide what will happen to the church? Who are you? Who do you think you are? 
How dare? And I say this, let me say it and die today and I'll go to heaven. Nonsense. How dare? How would dare? We don't respect God anymore. And especially those who claim they are Christians are the ones who are the most unfortunate people in this nation we live in. They claim they are Christians and they show the power to other gods, to other gods, to other gods, to other gods. Other gods have more prominence and preeminence in this nation than we who claim they are Christians. Unfortunately, some of them, we got them dead. And we also attributed to they are going there because they came to our churches and they behave they are Christians. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 13. He said, Bring no more futile sacrifice. Look at all him. Incense is an abomination to me. The new moons, the Sabbath. In the calling of assemblies, I cannot endure iniquity and sacred meeting. Hear me. Even the meetings in Ghana now, you have to be politically aligned as a pastor to be called to certain meetings. Shame on pastors. Shame on pastors who are happy they are part of MPP meeting. Shame on pastors who are happy they are part of NDC meeting. Shame on you that the Bible is being doomed from you that they that know their God uh, they shall be stronger and they shall do exploit they shall run uh, and they shall not be weary where is your God I saw 1 verse 14 Bible says your new moons and your appointed feast my soul is so hear me church ladies and gentlemen that is why even though you know certain people you are still not happy but the people you know yourself, they are not happy. And evil communication corrupts good manners. So don't think you are there. You are not there at all. Some of you will be listening to me after this program on this left. Hear me. If you think you are there, you too, you know you are not there. You are only being used. They are a trouble to me. I'm wary of bearing them. That says the Lord. Verse 15 and 16. Hear me, child of God. Some of you don't know anybody, but you are alive. Some of you, nobody knew you, but you are alive. Some of you were put on your side. Oh, my God. Committees are set in this country. And when your name is called, so this one doesn't belong to this party. Take his name out. In this country. And certain pastors are even part of the team that say, take his name out. This one is not in. As though the people forget that it is not he that will it. No, he that run it is God that shows mercy. Those of you who belong to where you think you belong, what has happened to you, you've wasted your own time. Because in his own time, he makes all things beautiful. When you spread out your hands, Isaiah 1 verse 15, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. That is what the word of God says. Lawrence Sutter didn't write that. But I'm happy Lawrence is reading that to you. That says the Lord. And so stop playing lip services. Your hands are full of blood. So stop, don't play, I'm going to this prayer meeting and I'm going to this thing. Some of you stop calling us to that nonsense meetings. We will not come again. We've been used in the past. Our eyes have opened. We have woken up from our dream ourselves. We were sleeping. We were so blind, but we were lost. We are found now. We were lost. We are found now. I'm not going to any of those nonsense meetings anymore. I'm not going to sit down to waste my energy anymore. I'm going to stay God. For they that know their God, they shall be stronger. They shall do exploit. They shall run now and they shall not be weary. I am going to seek the face of God in my room, in my house, in my church, in my building, in my closet. And God will hear it because there are certain people we even go and meet with. They are so filthy minded, vicious. I'll tell you that in a political atmosphere, God appears there. Isaiah 1 verse 15, 16 and 17. The Bible says, wash yourself. I say, wash yourself. Make yourself clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before me with my eyes and cease to do evil. 
How dare you use your position to victimize other people? Forgetting that every position anybody holds in Ghana is transient. Any position anybody holds in Ghana, anywhere in the world is transient. There's no position that is permanent. Champion today, nobody tomorrow. Where is let's even recall from our presence? Where is President Osajibo Kwame Nkrumah today? Come to where is Professor Abrifat Busia today? Where is Kenel a champion today? General Champion, he died as General Champion. Where is General Akufu today? Where is President Jerry John Rollins? Hey, JJ, 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 JJ. Hey, hey, every journey has an end. You better hold on to God because nothing is permanent. For they that know their God, they shall be stronger and they shall do exploit. They shall run out and they shall not be weary. Every position you hold today is transient. Even your life is transient. Watch your talk. Put away evil of your doing from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Verse 17. I'm reading from Isaiah chapter 1, from verse 1 to verse 31. And that is my message for the nation and for you as well. Because hear me, in the coming year, 2023, things will be difficult, but you will come out. God will open certain doors for certain people. I see, I see certain doors open. Some, eh, 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 the people who refuse to give to you, they should take what they have. The people who refuse to acknowledge you, they should take the acknowledgement. The people who refuse to accept you, they should take the acceptance. And you hold on to God, and God will make a way where there seems to be no way. For he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide. Everybody listening to me today, anywhere in the world you are listening to me today, Hold on to God and say God will disappoint you. The instruction in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 17 is that learn to do good. Seek justice. Rebuke the oppressor. Defend the fatherless. Plead for the widow. We still money to buy land cruises and millions of them and we pack them in our house. And widows are hungry. And orphans are hungry. Go to our orphanage in Ghana. It's a shame. But for the church, some orphans will never have food to eat. And yes, we have social services in Ghana. And our priority is mixed. That is why we are in trouble. That is why we are getting embarrassed. NDC got embarrassed. NPP is also getting embarrassed. In fact, all of them will continue to be in embarrassment until people begin to seek God's face and know that it is God. Uh, unless the God that we self build will labor and build in vain. Some of you, you wear a but you look more handsome than them. You look more beautiful than them. You look more special than and then, because God has made you fearfully and wonderfully made. You don't have much, but you have the glory of God. And the glory of God is keeping your life. Say, I receive. Learn to do good. Verse 18. The Bible says, come now and let us reason. That's where Dr. Nomanyo said, you said, in fact, you were in the spirit. Please come and shake hands with me. Come, 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 come. Come, 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 come. Right, Reverend Dr. Godwin Norman, you come and shake her. You got it right. You, it, it is only God who could have given you this message.
destruction of the transgression of the sinners shall be together. And those who forsake the Lord shall be consumed. Listen, gentlemen. So don't, don't, come, don't, don't, don't let, don't be envious of them at all. There are some people, they are like paper. They are about to dry. They are like weed. They are about to go. They are like leaves. They are about to fall. Don't, oh my God, I've decided that nobody will intimidate me. No. No. No, nobody has a right to intimidate you anymore. Christians, stand your grounds. Stand your grounds. Christians, 70 percent of this country are Christians. Stand your grounds. Otherwise, we are losing our heritage. We are losing our schools. We are losing our language. We are losing our attitude. We are even losing our flair. Verse 29. Did I read 28? Yes, 29. For they shall be ashamed of their terrible trees we shall have desire and you shall be embarrassed because of the garden which you have chosen verse 30 for you shall be as a terrible whose leaf fades and as a garden that has no water verse 31 the strong shall be as tinder, and the work of it as a spark. Both will bend together, and no one shall quench them. Hear me. From today, Ghana must learn to grow its own tomato. It must learn to grow its own cocoa. It must learn to grow its own gari. It must learn to grow its own sugar cane. It must learn to grow its own fish and meat. Ghana should not export from anybody again. We should not play lip services. I think we are playing too much lip services. And as a nation, we should learn to walk the talk. On this note, stand to your feet. We are entering into the new year. The strong shall be as tender. Both will bend together. And no one shall be quenched. Shall quench them. Lift up your right hand. We are marching. This is how you are entering the year. To Zion. Beautiful, beautiful Zion. We are marching in our world to Zion. Beautiful city. Somebody, we are marching on. Entering the new year. This is your year of victory. This is your year of favor. This is your year of glory. This is your year of honor. This is your year. We are marching. Say, I'm well. Let me sing alone. I promise you, you are entering the new year. Jesus, Christ. with favor. With glory, yes. with power, yes. with anointing, yes. with honor, yes. with grace, yes. with promotion, Amen. with open heavens, Amen. with open door. Amen. 2023 Amen. is your year Amen. that God is going to use Amen. to make a way for you. I agree with you. It's your royal boat. Yes. You are about to dig again, yes. and things will happen, yes. and doors will open, and yes. breakthrough will come. Never again will you be a reproach. Never again will you be a scorn. Never again will you be a power. 2023, even those who are perishing, we are not part of them. Those who are yes. getting sick, we yes. are not part of them. Those who are in pain, we are not part of them. Those who are wounded, we are not part of them. God is making a way in the midst of the storm. I release you in the name of Jesus. You are going into 2023 as a sign of breakthrough. Ladies and gentlemen, I bless you. 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 You are going to 2023 with honor, with favor, with glory, with understanding, with a new vision. Oh, the work of your hands. Anything you want from God, tell him now. Tell God now. Tell God now. 
Tell God anything you want from God. Uh, this is your day. This is your hour. This is your moment. Anything you want from me, tell him. Tell him about your home. Tell him about your children. Tell him about your marriage. Tell him about your future. Tell him about your body. Tell him about the sickness. Tell him about the limitation. Anything you want from God. This is the day that the Lord has made. This year is beginning well with you. You began it in the church. You began in the church. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord give you favor. The Lord give you grace. The Lord give you understanding. The Lord give you promotion. The Lord give you favor. The Lord open your door for you. May you experience new things. I said, ladies and gentlemen, can I congratulate you one more that you are in 2023? Somebody shout. Jesus. Receive, receive, receive. Go ahead and receive it.